very powerful people, politicians, senators, congress, uh, persons, governors, or whenever I meet with uh, billionaires or CEOs, what normally what they say to me is, my daughter or my son said you're a rock star and I have to meet you. Okay? And they're like, yeah. I, you know, I, I had a guy come to my house. Uh, I met his son, and the next day, the son brought his father, and his father could, like, buy the entire city of Miami. And, uh, and he said, well, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I know Bitcoin is really important, and my son says i got to sit down and listen. And so I orange-pilled him for two hours. And uh, I'm not going to say who, because it's, it's such a common story, but, I, but my point here is... Every one of you knows someone. Go tell the CEO, go tell your father, go tell your mother, go tell somebody that Bitcoin's going to change the world and they should figure out more about it. Because the number one thing you can do is educate the world on Bitcoin and let people know they need to figure out Bitcoin. And every one of you does make a difference because I would never get those meetings if it wasn't like some, someone that went and said, you got to pay attention. And my last point to you, you do not sell your Bitcoin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do not sell your Bitcoin. You just heard it from the Giga Chat CEO, Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy. Welcome back to the Marathon <laughs> Desk here, hosted by Bitcoin Magazine Live at the Bitcoin Conference. I'm Natalie Brunel. I'm joined by an amazing panel here on the Anchor Desk. I've traded mainstream news for Bitcoin news, right? We've got Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports, Ben Askren, also known as Funky Boy, right? Former UFC fighter, and Alex McShane of Bitcoin Magazine. What an amazing conversation. A lot of talk about Lightning Network. Bitcoin is a powerful savings technology. Dave, I'll start with you because you know what? They also talked about how 15 million coins are in strong hands, diamond hands, and you say you're diamond hands. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm never getting rid of mine. I've already sold them, like I said, once before. I bought it at 11,000, um, and then the Winkle losses, I get... over the world and from all walks of life whether you're a student a professional so it's been a while um so a lot has happened has it been that long february really was it february or march april okay anybody remember yeah Something a lot has happened okay yeah a lot has happened so yeah. uh, I, I i presume your bullishness is still intact <laughs> Yeah, so you want my summary for the past six months? Um, yeah, and uh, I mean, if you whatever you find worthwhile. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think if we just focus upon what's going on, the China crackdown took place, the hash rate moved uh, to the United States. You know, we, we drew down to, you know, 80, 85 X a hash, and now we're back up hitting all time highs again. So I think the, the overall mining network has redistributed itself and, and further decentralized itself. And it's been a Western drift of the Bitcoin network. So I would say geopolitically, we saw Bitcoin drift West. And I would say um, economically, and uh, that's all been a good thing. I think, I think we've seen a substantial Western embrace of Bitcoin since uh, May even um if we look at the political winds that are blowing clearly there's um there's a lot of support there was a fear i think six months ago that we might have uh 
government antipathy toward Bitcoin in the West. You know, you heard the most informed criticism was, you know, Ray Dalio's, well, it's so good, someone's going to ban it. I was like, it kind of, first it was, well, I don't get it, I don't like it, it's bad. And then it became, I guess it's not bad. And then it became, well, I guess it's not going away and it works, but it's, it works too well. Then it became a Jamie Dimon, Ray Dalio, it's just too good. Uh, you know, even, you know, Frank Gistra, eventually everybody kind of revolved around or settled upon the, the narrative that, yeah, it's not bad, it's good, but it's too good, and that's why I'm afraid of it. And um, I think in the last six months, right, we see, in fact, the opposite's happened. The administration's in favor. We've got supporters of Bitcoin in the administration. I, it seems to me like Biden was a positive check. The entire set of administrative regulators are positive checks. Uh, most of the noise around regulation is really just the altcoiners, right? The DeFi people, the security token people, the staking protocols, the, you know, stablecoin issuers. And, um, you know, they, they want to generate a bunch of noise that, uh, that regulators are hostile. But I can't see any activity in the past six months from a regulator that was, in my opinion, uh, hostile to Bitcoin. Um, I think that uh, the politics right now are such that you have kind of crypto versus Bitcoin. You have all the all the altcoins versus Bitcoin, and and generally, uh, generally, uh, if the altcoins can drive Bitcoin into the debate, right? If it's bad for the altcoin, they want it to be bad for Bitcoin, so that all the Bitcoiners will support their position. So I think you see a lot of that, where people will try to recharacterize utterances by regulators as being bad for Bitcoin, when in fact they're not bad for Bitcoin. They're bad for security tokens, DeFi exchanges, unregulated crypto exchanges, NFTs, or something else, but not Bitcoin. I think the other dynamic you see here is uh, a little bit of tension between the entrepreneurs that control the industry in the first decade and the institutions coming in the next decade. Like, um, everybody in the world agrees that digital currency is a good idea. I mean, the Chinese want digital currency. I think every country wants it. Even the U.S. wants it. We just can't agree on whether or not it should be an FDIC and, you know, chartered bank to issue it and whether or not, what, what are the licenses you need to issue a digital dollar versus... Um, versus um, uh, anything else, versus an analog dollar. So I think there's a lot of noise that's all about, uh, all about will the entrepreneurs continue to be able to do business unfettered or will they need uh, to come public, right? Is it public investors or private investors? Is it public companies or private companies? Is it chartered banks? or techno entrepreneurs <laughs> or um, I think that uh, in the past 30, 30 to 60 days, the, the thing that's surprising to me is actually there's so much general support for everything in Congress and the Senate, right? <laughs> you know, the narrative was they're going to ban it. I think, that, I, I think my observation is they don't want to ban anything, <laughs> which, which, is, which, which actually means that you have um, you have the administration in the middle. You have the politicians on the far, you know, the far. Uh, what is the word? Uh, liberal side. And then you kind of have uh, uh, Bitcoin maximalist on the other side, which is which is uh, to my mind interesting. Um, I think that the volatility in the market right now is is because Bitcoin is still conjoined with the rest of the crypto industry. Like, as far as I can see, the people driving the market uh, in the near term from day to day are large pools of hedge fund, hedge fund capital and investor capital, highly leveraged, fast money that's cross-trading Bitcoin versus every other altcoin offshore and in DeFi with huge leverage. And their time horizons are one minute to one week. Like, for example, if you look, 
If you look at uh, minute by minute trading patterns of Bitcoin versus ETH, they're trading uh, in lockstep almost uh, every 60 seconds. Like you'll see, um, you'll see a dump in the market in ETH, and it'll be reflected in Bitcoin in 30 seconds. And so um, uh, that's interesting, and I've seen uh, that correlation going on for a while, uh, irregardless of news. And uh, of course, I think that a lot of people have a lot of money, and they have a lot of leverage, right? You can trade with 20x leverage. You can trade in theory if you, you know, if you cross collateralize through a DeFi exchange, you know, you could trade with even more than 20x leverage. So there's a lot of fast money with a lot of leverage trading across the CFI crypto exchanges and the DeFi exchanges. And they've got, you know, Cardano and Dogecoin cross collateralized to ETH. And it, and it seems pretty clear to me, someone's got a big block of Bitcoin tied up in ETH, in the ETH network. And when ETH trades down, Bitcoin's trading down almost like they're, they're a fused currency pair or a fused asset pair and they couldn't unconnect that, that they can't uh, dis, uh, what is the word, disintegrate that in the near term. Over the long term, like months, quarters, years, yeah. But in minutes, hours, and days, it seems like there's a lot of integration there. So, you know, what, what do I think in general? It's like, obviously I'm bullish on the asset class. It seems to me that that uh, we've got remarkable consensus that Bitcoin is digital property. We've got market remarkable consensus that Bitcoin Everything that's got an ICO, everything on proof of stake, 